What's up everyone, welcome back to another What If video. We ended the last part with the conclusion to the Namek Saga. Frieza was defeated by Goku, and due to his sharp increase in strength, he only needed to use Kaioken, and now Goku has boarded a random ship and is being flown to a new planet. While this happens, everyone else on Namek has been sent to Earth. Piccolo and Tien have been revived, and with the Namekians on Earth, now the Z Fighters only have to wait a bit and Yamcha and Chaozu will come back as well. Turles and Vegeta are now pretty much permanent residents on Earth, and now everyone awaits the return of Goku. This is where we'll begin this part. Goku, still being conscious and intact, is concerned about what will happen to him. He's on a random ship hurtling towards some planet, and doesn't know what lies ahead for him. At least, everyone else made it back to Earth, and they're safe. Back on Earth, a few months have passed. The Namekian Dragon Balls are active again, and Yamcha has been revived along with Chaozu. They try to wish Goku back, but they find out that Goku is actually alive. And surprisingly, he doesn't want to come back. So, pretty much like the original. But over this time, life goes pretty normal. Turles and Vegeta are at Capsule Corp, and unsurprisingly, the two of them become pretty good friends and rivals. Nothing really happens during the time it takes for Goku to return. While Vegeta sticks with the Saiyan armor he gets from Bulma, Turles' armor has been pretty much destroyed from all the fighting he's done, from when he first came to Earth and when he was on Namek. Rather than wearing the same clothes as Vegeta, he actually gets a completely new outfit from Piccolo, his own G instead of some armor that he was wearing before. He keeps the color scheme of his old armor, and also keeps the Saiyan gloves and boots, and this is what he sticks with for the time being. Eventually, Frieza does end up arriving on Earth, and this is when we're introduced to Trunks. Everyone is completely speechless when he goes Super Saiyan, because they've never seen a Super Saiyan until now. The power is way greater than Kakarot's, and is completely different than the power boost he got on Namek from some Zenkais. This is the true Super Saiyan. And with Trunks here, the encounter with Mecha Frieza and King Cold goes pretty normal, and Goku arrives back on Earth after going to Yardrat. He's a lot stronger in base than normal, but he doesn't have access to Super Saiyan. If you remember the last part, Goku at Kaioken times 20 was stronger than he was in canon as a Super Saiyan due to some better training in Zenkais. But even with that, it's important to pursue the power that Trunks is showing off because he realizes how big of a change it is. Trunks is a little confused and concerned to see that they don't know what Super Saiyan is yet, and this Turles guy is here and he's never seen him before. He actually mistook him for Goku first, but he didn't ask right away. It's just really off-putting to him because, you know, he looks exactly like Goku. But the good thing is that everyone here seems powerful enough to the point where it's not too concerning, and there's actually an upside. Since they're all pretty much stronger in base, that means once they're Super Saiyans, they'll be much stronger than they were in Trunks' timeline. Trunks takes his leave, and now everyone has to train during the three years before the androids arrive. The training is much more effective this time. Having Turles there as another training partner is a huge help, and along with Goku and Vegeta, Krillin and Gohan are massively stronger due to their training and experiences on Namek. This translates over to Piccolo, Tien, and Yamcha, since they get better training as a result. In his time on Yardrat, Goku didn't have Super Saiyan, so along with his training for instant transmission, he's been working mainly on Kaioken. After experiencing how powerful it was against Frieza, and how well it worked against Vegeta, He's been trying to maintain it longer and also increase the strength. He's focused on Super Saiyan, so it's not really that important right now, but it'll be important later because now he has higher levels of it and he could hold it for longer. His goal for now is just to go Super Saiyan, and sure enough, he does. Vegeta this time isn't alone as much. He's still set up with Bulma, but more importantly, him and Turles begin to grow a lot closer as comrades, and they essentially spend most of their time training together during this time period. They both have started to transition from being bad guys into sorta anti-heroes, with them being focused on surpassing their limits as Saiyans and getting stronger. Vegeta has his classic goal of trying to surpass Goku, while Turles is something similar, but he's more so trying to break his own limits and see if he can go as far as Goku did with his. Like I stated in earlier parts, he still has his original goal of becoming powerful, but now he wants to try some new methods since he saw how well it worked for Goku. He's beginning to realize that the Tree of Might isn't the true key to his strength. Because of his experiences with Goku, Turles is a little less reckless and unpredictable when compared to Vegeta, and with his Earthling influences, he's progressed to a point where he's not that bad of a guy anymore. The two of them obviously also bond through their Saiyan pride, and they train with Kakarot from time to time and make a deadly trio of Saiyans. The three of them work well off each other to get more powerful, and training continues and the time skip passes. And now, we've arrived at the beginning of the Android Saga. In the city, chaos ensues as the androids make themselves known. The Z Fighters go into the city and try and find them, which leads them to encountering 19 and 20, and they take the fight outside of the city. Goku begins fighting 19, and because of his power increase, he's actually able to defeat the android this time after figuring out his ability. But even though he was able to defeat him, he still succumbs to the heart virus, at least once the fight is finished. He's now being taken home, 
and Android 20 is up against the remaining fighters. Vegeta steps up to the plate first in order to fight, and shows off his new Super Saiyan form. Everyone watches in awe seeing that Vegeta is a Super Saiyan alongside Goku, with Turles watching with a smirk, since it's not really too surprising to him. Vegeta is only the third strongest of the Super Saiyans as of now. There's someone else above Vegeta besides Kakarot. Jiro desperately tries to escape while Vegeta fights him, and he eventually is able to cause a distraction and get out of there. As he tries to escape, someone slams him into the ground. Turles was able to stop him. He wants to step in and fight, but this is Vegeta's fight, Turles was just helping out. Because he caught Vegeta's prey, this means Vegeta is actually able to finish off Jiro this time. But it's a double-edged sword. Because Jiro is dead now, the androids won't be activated, and that also means they can't find the androids at this moment. Trunks arrives and sees that these androids aren't the one from his timeline, but it's good that they're dead at least. It seems Jiro was the creator and was attempting to escape and activate the other androids, so now they have to find his lab on their own. In the meantime, it seems like there's still no threat. Everyone is on guard because they don't know if the androids will even show up anytime soon, but they're still trying to search for the lab and see if they could find them. If they're lucky, they may not have been activated yet, but out of nowhere, they begin to sense something that's a little weird. While searching for the lab and Goku still recovering, the group picks up on a new key that they've never sensed before. It's a mix of Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Frieza, King Cold, and even Turles. Of course, I'm referring to Cell. He's arrived and is intent on finding the androids, just like the Z Fighters. And while I usually don't like to change the future timelines, since we're making Turles canon here, I'm gonna say that in Cell's timeline and in Trunks' timeline, the events of that movie that happened in Part 1 also happen in those timelines. They just ended with Turles dying. And while I did say before that Trunks actually didn't recognize Turles, that's because he's only heard him from stories and didn't know that he looked exactly like Goku, which is why he was so surprising to him. But in his timeline, the events in that movie actually happened, and he realizes what happened with this guy and that he turned good after learning his name. And that would mean, in that third timeline where Cell came from, Jiro's spy bots were actually able to pick up on Turles' DNA, and now it's part of Cell. The Z Fighters go to confront him, and they realize how powerful he actually is. This encounter means that they find out Cell's goal, but Cell also finds out that the androids aren't actually activated yet, meaning they're most likely in the lab. Cell is advantaged right now. All he has to do is remain undercover as he evades the Z Fighters. He sends out a solar flare and makes his escape. Now, the Z Fighters have to worry about Cell finding the androids first, and they're on the clock. Goku is almost cured from the heart virus, but he hasn't awoken yet. Everyone now is purely focused on finding and destroying the androids, so Cell can't grow any more powerful. After the wild goose chase, the Z Fighters arrive at the lab and find it in shambles. The most horrifying part is when they find the pods of the androids. A pod labeled 16 is completely destroyed, and everything else in the lab along with it is destroyed too. Two other pods labeled 17 and 18 are empty, and look as if someone forced them open. It's nice to see you've all finally arrived. An unfamiliar voice speaks from the darkness of the lab. Vegeta, Trunks, and Turles are now on guard, as Cell steps out to reveal that he has achieved his perfect form. Z Fighters failed and found the lab when it was too late, and Cell got there before they could. Cell is content with his new form. Vegeta tries to attack, but no one else does. Vegeta's attacks don't really do anything. He even charges a massive final flash, which basically vaporizes the mountain and the lab in it, and it does some damage to Cell, but he just regenerates it. No one even tries to fight Cell because they know he's far too strong. Suddenly, another person arrives. It's Goku. He's finally woken up and instant transmissions over to the lab, right after sensing this new power. Everyone is glad to see that he's okay, but Goku is just as intimidated as everyone else. Cell is way too powerful for them to handle, at least at the moment. Cell is amused to see Goku, glad to find out that he's alive and well. He could eliminate everyone right now, but that wouldn't be too fun. He wants a good fight. Feeling how large the power gap is, Cell has a proposal. Maybe if he lets them train for a bit, they could have a chance at fighting him. Perhaps a tournament would be fun. Cell decides that now, he'll announce the Cell games, allowing everyone to prepare. And he heads off to announce into the world, and create the arena. Still in shock, the group recollects themselves and they try to figure out what to do. Kami then calls everyone up to the lookout, and this is when everyone gets the idea to go in the room of spirit and time. Alongside that, Kami and Piccolo end up fusing as well, just to see if it would do anything to help. However, it's imperative that the strongest fighters of the group go in and train, so training in the room of spirit and time is actually the most important thing right now. Of their strongest fighters, that would be Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, Trunks, and Turles. Without question, Vegeta drags Trunks in first as they begin to train. Since there's an odd number of people, Piccolo decides that Goku and Gohan will go in next, 
and that they must focus on getting Gohan to become a Super Saiyan as well. If he's able to, then they'll have a huge advantage over Cell. Once they're done, Piccolo will head in with Turles. He was hoping Turles would head in with Vegeta, but this is fine. Like I mentioned before, Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks aren't their only Super Saiyans. He hasn't had any need to utilize it yet, but during the three years of training, Turles was able to unlock it himself, and he's actually stronger than Vegeta. Not by a considerable amount, but he's in between him and Goku. Due to the prior training he had and the effects of the fruit coming back to him earlier on in the Namek Saga, Turles is one of the strongest people they got right now, only surpassed by Goku. Goku wants to not only focus on getting Gohan to use Super Saiyan, but also see if they can surpass it. He assures Turles that there's something greater than Super Saiyan that might help, and that they're only scratching the surface of the form. Turles agrees, feeling that they might be able to build on top of the form and go beyond it. The two of them are looking forward to going in, as is Gohan. And that's where we'll end off for now. Will our heroes actually prevail in the Cell games? Will they be able to go beyond Super Saiyan? Make sure to comment your suggestions below as we prepare for the next part. And as always, remember to drop a like and subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications about future parts of this what if, and any other videos of mine. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.